All right, so unit three project, um, we have the initial you know, motion and gravity set up. Our character can move around. Um, as we can see right here, we have the jumping ability and we have the stages set up. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna work on for this video is doing resetting. So resetting is basically we want, when the Z key is pressed to say, hey, we wanna start from the very beginning and we want to have all power-ups and everything completely you know, canceled out. Um, to do that is rather simple. I'm gonna go with a broadcast message. Um, one of the things with the Z key and with the resetting function that we need to be able to do is we need to be able to reset everything. So not just our main sprite, we don't just need to reset you know, the dog to the left side of the screen right here. We also need to reset to the main um, stage that we're beginning on. We need to you know, start on bedroom one right here. So if we're in bedroom two, it needs to reset. Um, the best way to do this is with a broadcast message so that we can catch that, um, you know, that reset across our entire snap program. So how I'm going to do that, you can see I set the Z key press um, and then I say broadcast and a message I call reset. And what I'm going to do is take this down. I'm going to say um, when I receive that message, when I receive reset, I want the dog to go to zero to our starting position, negative 200, negative 130. And I want to start with, you know, my motion and my gravity loops. So another thing I'm going to do is when the flag is clicked, I basically want to start from that same starting position. So I'm going to say, you know what, let's go ahead and say when the flag is clicked, I also broadcast that same message. So I do the exact same thing if a player were to start the sprite, right, or start the snap program. Not only that, but I also want to go to stage and I want to basically start at the correct background. So I'm going to go to um, control. I'm going to say when I receive, and again, this is the stage that's receiving this message, say reset. And I want to go to looks and I want to say switch to costume. And here we're going to say switch to costume bedroom one. So now if we do this and I click the flag icon, you can see we start correctly. Now, if I change the stage so if i go to a different background and i move the dog around a little bit right we can see as soon as i press the z key we reset to the very beginning like normal so that's how you set up the uh, reset functionality so we just set up our reset functionality and now we want to basically make our game a side scroller right so how do we do that well it involves changing the scenery of our stage right so you can see right now if i go ahead and click start when i move my character to the right what we want to happen is instead of falling off like he's going to do we want our background to change from bedroom one to bedroom two to party room now, um, if you did the do now 3.2, you can get a really good example of this. That's honestly what I ripped off. I went and looked at the code for the um, starter code that they had, but I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna set up a custom block to make everything nice and neat. That is called scene change, right? And scene change is gonna be included in the main loop right here that I have controlling my motion and my gravity that's checking our input constantly, right? That's why we have that forever loop set up right there. So I'm gonna go inside of scene change and the basics of what I wanna do is I wanna check what happens when my sprite goes too far to the left or too far to the right. So I'm gonna set up an if statement and I'm going to say if, and I want an operator because I'm going to be checking these in just a second, greater than and less than. And again, if I'm checking the X position of my sprite, I can just use the X position block right here. So I go to X position and I say, if the X position is greater than 200, what am I going to do? Well, if the X position is greater than 200, what I want to then check is not just the X position, but which scene I'm on. So if I go to looks, I can find, actually, I believe it's sensing. If I go to sensing, I can find this very useful block down here, which checks the costume of another sprite. So here I want to check costume name. Okay, if it'll let me do the thing. I want to check, hmm, oh no, I have to go click stage first and then I can check costume name. So I want to check if costume name is equal to something on a broadcast a particular message. So basically what I'm going for is if I check the costume name and we are on, let's say, bedroom one of my stage or say we're at the party room, right? What, what do I want it to do? I'm gonna have it broadcast a separate message each time that basically tells the stage which costume to change to. 
So here I'm going to say if costume name of stage equals bedroom one, and we have to make sure that's spelled correctly. If costume name of bedroom of stage equals bedroom one, I want to broadcast the message. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say broadcast, and then I'm going to click new, and I'm going to call this first scene. And that's going to tell the stage, and I will set that up in just a minute, to go to the first scene of the entire game. So here I go to also reset the sprite to its starter coordinates here. I'm setting it to um, negative 190, and I'm going to change this in a second as well, because that way my sprite doesn't start off at 200, and if you kind of fidget it a little bit too far to the left, it resets, right? We kind of want to give the user some leeway. We give them those 10 units to play around with. So then um, that's actually pretty much it. What I'm going to do is just simply duplicate and drag this down so we can now check if the costume name of the stage is bedroom two. I actually want to broadcast a different message, which I'm going to actually, this should not be first scene. This should be second scene, right? Because if we start out and the exposition is greater than 200, if I'm in bedroom two, I want to go to the second scene here. I'm going to change this to third scene and click OK. And now it will basically broadcast third scene. I can check that I'm in bedroom two. Um, later on, I'm going to duplicate this whole block because we are just going to use that same functionality. Later on, I'm going to set what happens when I reach the very far right of my final stage, which is this party room right here. But we'll save that for later. So if the exposition is greater than 200, here we want to actually check if the exposition is less than negative 200, right? Because that's the far left side of our screen. And the second block right here we want to do is checking what happens if we go to the far left. So if exposition is less than negative 200, and of course, if we're on bedroom one, we can't really go anywhere. So I'm going to check bedroom two first. And I'm also going to change this right here to party room, right? So if I'm in the bedroom two, I want to broadcast first scene here. I want to broadcast second scene here, second scene and click OK. So you can see here, basically, if I'm at the far left side of my stuff of my stage and I am in bedroom two, I go to first scene and I reset. Um, now, actually, one thing we want to do is change this to 190 because we want to start on the far right of the screen. Right. So I click OK. And then I already have scene change. So if I play it right now, as you can see, my dog basically just goes back and forth, right? But what I'm going to do is have the stage look for that broadcast message. So here we already have a broadcast, you know, stuff set up. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this a couple of times. Only really three times is what's needed. So here I'm going to check if first scene is called, I go to bedroom one. If second scene is broadcasted, I go to bedroom two because that's my second scene. And then of course, if third scene is called, I go to the party room. So I click stop, go ahead and start my code. As you can see, if the sprite goes to the right, I change to the party room because we broadcasted that second scene message. And if I go all the way to the far right, I go into my party room because I broadcasted the um, that third scene message. And so that's how you set up sort of the side scrolling functionality of our game.